Here they are, folks, all unboxed. 14 strands of incandescent mini lights, 25 bulbs per strand, for a grand total of whatever it says on the screen. That's a lot of light bulbs. What we're going to do today is have some fun. We're going to test and see what happens when we plug in too many Christmas lights. Everyone always asks, what happens? Will I burn my house down? We're going to find out today in the workshop on the workbench. Fire extinguisher ready to go just in case. So, two extension cords we're going to test. I've got 16 gauge SPT2 and then I've got 18 gauge SPT1. So if you've watched any of my previous videos talking about extension cords and fixing lights and all kinds of things like that, you'll know these are the two primary kinds of wires that are in most uh, of my Christmas displays. So we're going to figure out today how many of these will it take to set one of these on fire. So if I plug them all in, I just write about 20 amps, which is about as much as I'm willing to put on this 12 gauge cord hooked up to a 20 amp outlet on a 20 amp breaker. So um, also, we're gonna have some fun. I got the kilowatt meter to measure the amps, and I've got infrared thermometer to see how much that wire heats up before it sets on fire. Assuming we can get to set it on fire, I don't know yet, we're gonna see. So, let me go ahead and plug it in, and we'll see all the glory that it has to offer us. Oh my gosh, look at all that. Okay, I've got the camera set up above the workbench so I can be hands-free now. So first up is our SPT-1 wire that's 18 gauge and I, just as I do with most stuff, I put my vampire plugs on it. If you guys have watched my other videos, you know how these plugs work. They've got the little vampire teeth sticking up on the plug right there. And it pierces the wire to make contact. So, what's going to happen? Are we going to fail on the vampire teeth or are we going to fail elsewhere on the wire here? I'm going to plug in our cord here and it's not going to come on until I flip the switch over here on the right. So we're doing this hands free. We're not taking any chances. I'm going to start off with 7 to 8 amps. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in. There we go. Okay guys, it's been about 4 or 5 minutes. We've got 125 C9 bulbs hooked up to this string right now, or hooked up to the extension cord. So we'll go ahead and get a temperature reading. We started out at 72, and now we are up to 81. And it's kind of been topping out around 80 or 81 for the last minute or so, so let's just call it that. And our voltage drop, we went from 123 volts before we plugged anything in, it dropped down to 119 and stayed at 119. So that's pretty interesting. Not as much voltage drop as I expected. That's with um, set between 7 and 8 amps running through this. So I'm going to reset now and let's plug 10 amps in and see what 10 does. Alright guys, I broke out the other camera. Let's see where we're at. Our voltage drop is now 117. So we went start out 123 with no load then down to 119. Now we're down to 117. Our amp draw is right around 10, just under 10, and we're pumping over a thousand watts through this itty bitty wire right there. So let's go ahead and get a temperature reading on it again. It's still a point where I'm willing to touch it, and it's getting warm, but it's 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 nothing substantial really. Yeah, we're hovering. If I can get the measurement right on there, we're hovering right around, just under 90 degrees. So it's warmed up quite a bit from room temperature, but again, we're not in the danger zone yet, so let's try and get there. 16 amps through an 18 gauge extension cord. Three, two, one, go. Voltage drop is down to 113, and our watts are up over 1700. We're a microwave and a half. All right, guys, it's been five minutes. I don't think we're going to get anything to happen. Let's unplug this and check things out. Okay, I would say it is a great idea never, ever to plug that many C9 lights into this here 18-gauge cord. But we haven't started a fire yet, so... Or done something. I don't know what we're going to end up doing. 
But let's go ahead, we're gonna do it. We're gonna go for the full 20 amps. Stand back. All right, 19.4 amps. Our voltage drop is down to 111. And our watts, we're running over two microwaves, over 2,000 watts. It's been almost 15 minutes. Let's take our reading. Yeah, we're just over 150 still. Our voltage drop is still about 110, 111. And we're still pumping almost 20 amps. So my guess is that we're not going to get any further with this. But for a little bit of a science thought, I think I got an idea. I don't think we've got a long enough wire here. Because even though we got a pretty significant voltage drop and the electrons got to push really hard to try and get through this tiny little wire after going through the big 12 gauge wire. I think if we add a longer length of wire, I think the voltage drop will be so significant and the resistance so strong that maybe we can get there and get this thing to a spot where um, we can realistically demonstrate a scenario that could happen. Because without a doubt, I think this could catch on fire in the correct circumstance. I just don't know if we've created that circumstance quite yet today. Not This could catch on fire if I left it another half hour too, so I don't know. But it's definitely angry with me right now because it's getting pretty hot and you can see it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's super malleable right now. So let's go ahead and unplug everything. And here's what I've got. We got a long coil and we're gonna plug this thing in next and see if this will do it. Oh yeah, here we go. This is how hot it was. Look at just pull right out of the plug. <laughs> Talk about an angry piece of wire. Yeah, oh my gosh. I mean, that's like... Look at that. That's like Play-Doh. Yeah, I'd say we're definitely on the verge of, uh, of something bad there, so... Let's try the coil, see what happens after that. Okay, change of plans. I had decided I didn't want to ruin that long extension cord I had already made, so I got here a six foot cord, same material, 18 gauge SPT1. Uh, it's about six foot long, just coiled into a kind of a spool there. Um, but I got it hooked up to the cords, power's flowing through it already, ready to go. So we just got to plug in all of our 14 strands of C9 bulbs here. So Ready, set, here it goes. Three, two, one. There they are. So we'll keep an eye on this on the camera and see what happens. I don't know if the camera can see that, but that is a vampire plug that is beginning to melt. Oh my gosh, and the wire is melting right there too. We're going to have catastrophic failure here soon. Look at that wire melting. Right where it enters the plug. And the and the plug itself is melting. Down to 107 volts. Started at 120, 123, so that's how much voltage drop we've got. Temperature, oh my gosh, temperature is 180 plus. I can get it right on this right spot again. Look at that, 199! <laughs> Yeah, definitely not. No, oh, there it is. Not, 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 no, there it is. Yeah, definitely not. No, there it is. All right, that tripped the breaker. It's a uh, unplug from the outlet. I'll go ahead and unplug it here. Just to. Oh my gosh, it definitely smells of smoke. Well, we didn't get a fire. We got a little bit of spark, and we definitely got some melting. God dang, that's hot. Whew. So, yeah, that wire, everything is like molten right now. So, I'll see if I can get another temperature reading on here on the plug up close now. Yeah, 200, 209 degrees, 219, look at that. Basically right where it's melted. 
it's basically over the boiling point there, so no wonder it melted. So I'll tell you right now, based on what I'm looking at here, that plug is hot as heck right now, but this wire, I mean, it's, I don't want to touch it almost because it's like, it's almost molten right now. It's very malleable, very, extremely warm. Like it's almost like a melted plastic at the moment. And our vampire plug is still too hot to touch. So that's what it was. Six foot long, 18 gauge wire with uh, about 20 amps pumping through it. Okay, gloves are on so I can touch it. So here's our nail plug. Let's get a temperature reading on the mail plug. Looks to be right around the 150 range, but I mean, look at this. That wire has melted and it started to, look at that. The insulation jacket is totally melted off right there. See the, focus in, see the bare wire right there? Right there? It's totally melted. I don't know if I can get this thing off. That's coming. Oh my god, yeah, look at that. So, that's a melted wire inside there. I don't know, this is where it shorted out. It was right here where this wire enters the male plug. So, it definitely threw, I mean, look at that. That is stuck in there. So there's our short right there. It, it's, that's melted in there. There's no way I'm getting that out. <laughs> okay, interesting. Go to the female plug. Now look at this. This is the one that's spectacular. Look at how much that's melted. This this plug was over 220 degrees. So let's see if it's hardened up enough. I can touch it now with the gloves. See if I can unplug it. Yeah, you know what? It's melted around this this uh, three-way tap I'm using. That's why I didn't want to ruin my my nice 12 gauge extension cord. So these are melted together. <laughs> That's not coming apart. So let's see if by some miracle I can get the back of the plug off. <sighs> oh, well that worked. Yeah, look at that. Totally melted. And it nearly, it nearly shorted right here too. See the crease in the wire there? Nearly shorted there. And that is, look at that. It's melted into the plug. Just like the other, look, that is, that's in there. I can't pull that out. So, well there you go folks. That's why you don't want to overload your extension cords with Christmas lights. So, concept proven. That, this, I mean this is such an easy fire hazard. If this was any, anywhere near something flammable, carpet or whatever have you, um, I mean, when the plug and the cord can get over 220 degrees, I mean, you're just asking for trouble. So, lesson learned. You, especially when using these cords and these uh, vampire plugs that I like I use in my display, it's essential, as I described in my other videos, to always keep track of how many amps you're using. Because these plugs don't have fuses. You know, most extension cords don't have fuses. But, like, take our strand. Here's our strand of C9 lights. Now remember, these have a fuse in here. So these are five amp fuse. So these things will blow if you plug in too many strings. So the fuse will blow in here long before you melt this wire because this is the same SPT1 18 gauge wire as our extension cord right here. So whenever you're using any extension cords, just beware that uh, it can cause a significant problem. This is our 16 gauge cord I showed earlier. I'm not even gonna bother testing this one because if our 18 gauge one took 12 minutes to catch on fire, um, I'm not even gonna risk it going with this high one because uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot more amps that can flow through there to cause an issue. For summary, here's what happened when you overload an extension cord. Wire insulation melts off, causes an immediate short, melts into the plug. I can't pull it out, there's no way. Fire waiting to happen. So thanks for joining me on this little fun experiment. I hope everyone learned something. And remember, never, ever overload your extension cords and always be aware of how many amps they can carry and how many amps you are plugging into them. It's always very important. 
Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, you want to see some more fun experiments in the future or more how-to videos, leave me a comment and please subscribe.